All right, Avi here and welcome back to our web development series. Now we left off where we had understood what a div tag is. And honestly, a div tag allows you to style sections, plain and simple. We've also learned what inline styling is in CSS. Basically every tag has a style attribute and you can modify that style attribute by specifying this sort of code where you have um, what are you modifying and what it should be. In today's lecture, we're going to be covering what external CSS is. All right. So there's internal styling and then there's external. External is pretty straightforward. Instead of placing your CSS in your .html file, you create a completely separate file for your CSS. And I know what you're wondering. Why would you want to use external style sheets? What's the whole point of external styling? Well, basically, it allows us to use the same styles without repetition. For example, let's say that we wanted to modify each one of these headings, give it a specific font size, give it a specific font weight, and then there's tons of headings, okay? So every single heading we have on our page, these four, let's say we had a few more down over here, we'd have to modify each one by saying style is equal to something, or we'd have to create multiple div tags for every single one of those headers and modify it like that. But what if you could just say header and then modify all of them in just one line of CSS. By doing so, we save time, we save effort, and it makes code a lot more efficient. So yes, me talking and rambling is a bit confusing. So what I want you to do is say file, and then add a new file. And this file, so command S, and we're gonna call it um, style.css, okay? So go ahead and save this, and that basically creates our external CSS file. Now there has to be a way to link our .html file with a .css file. And we do that in our head. So right after the title, what I want you to do is type, uh, open your tag, link rel is equal to style sheet and href is equal to, in quotation marks, style.css, close it. Um, okay, so again, link is one of those tags. It's a single tag, it's by itself href again just telling where this uh, css file is located and then rel tells it what it is it's a style sheet okay so let's go ahead and save this and now we've linked our html file with our css um, style sheet before we do anything else what i want to do is remove all of these styles instead of doing this we'll add all of our styles through our .css page so let's go ahead and remove this style and this style okay and one more now we have a few more actually and this one okay so now that our website has no more in style css let's refresh and now it's back to white black and an image okay so now let's understand how the syntax is for an external style sheet remember internal it was straightforward you had your property a colon what the property should be and then a semicolon in the external style sheet, it's very similar, but you need to specify what you modify. All right, we have our paragraph. I wanna make it um, the font red, the text a bit bigger, and change the font family. The way I do that is I type P, and then I open curly braces, and now I type my normal property. I wanna change the color to red. I want to make the font family Verdana, okay? And then I wanna make my font size 20 pixels. So go ahead and save this, refresh, and now our paragraphs, all the paragraphs on our web page will be modified. For example, if I come down over here and right before body end, I add a new paragraph and I say, this is for testing purposes. And I end it, save, refresh. You can immediately see that that paragraph tag has also been modified. So what did this code do? It took every single paragraph tag it could find in our HTML website. Again, we specify that by just saying the, the tag name, in this case, P, and then set these three properties. We specify that every paragraph tag should have a color, red, every paragraph tag should have a font family, Verdana, and every paragraph tag should have a font size of 20 pixels. Instead of having to put inline CSS for every single paragraph tag, we were able to do it all together and it's much more efficient. So let's go ahead and modify a few more things. Um, we have our headings, right? Let's go ahead and say h, h1, h2, h3. And let's say 
we want to modify all of them, right? There we have four different headaches. You can separate them by commas, H2, H3, H4. And then let's go ahead and say color. I'm going to make these uh, green. I'm going to make uh, font size a bit bigger. So let's make them all 40 pixels. And then let's make our font family Arial. So refresh. And now what it did was, even though we had four different headers, and before we realized that header one was the biggest, header four was the smallest, when he applied the style, it made all of them the same size. All right, so that's basically how you modify the headers and the paragraph tags. Now just to do one more thing, um, let's go ahead and modify the body tag. So the body tag, using the body tag, we can specify, do we want something to go everywhere? Um, this will be applied to the entire web page. So I can say something like, I want the entire body to have a background color of, uh, we had orange last time, I believe. So let's save that, refresh, now it's all orange. Now let's say I, I, I make the color, so I want all the text in my body to be blue. Save this and refresh, what happened? All the text that wasn't modified by the CSS code already is now blue, okay? So the way I want you to think about it is this is external. The paragraph and the header tags and the uh, list tags, they all exist inside of the body tag. If you say that all the text in the body tag should be blue, it goes through it one by one and makes it all blue. But then when it gets to the inner tags, the paragraphs and header tags, it gets replaced and it finds out, oh, the paragraph should be blue, not red. So it makes it red. Header should be green, not red and it, or green, not blue. And it makes it green. But anyways, this is basically what external CSS files is. You specify the tag that you want to modify. And again, you can always put multiple tags. I could put another P tag here or I could put an anchor tag and I can modify all of these just like that. After that, you have your property, colon, what you're changing it to, semicolon, and external CSS style sheets are very straightforward. All right, one last thing for you on this lecture, and that's understanding what the different color values are. Obviously, you're not gonna have just blue or just orange, and you're gonna have different shades, different varieties. There's 16.8 million different colors. You wanna be able to access those and not just say normal, plain, flat colors that we already know. There's two different ways you can do that. There is something known as hex colors, and then there's something known as RGB colors. Hex colors are six digit combos of letters and numbers that start with the hash sign. For example, I wanna make my background color a nice turquoise. So I wanna say hash zero E F F E three. Again, you can find these hash uh, values online. They're not very hard to find. If you just search uh, hex, colors, a quick Google search should be able to tell you what the different hex color codes are. And the second one is listed right here, RGB color code. The 16.8 million colors that exist can all be written using RGB, red, green, and blue. Every one of them has basically a fraction out of 256. So I can say something like RGB, how much red do I want? How much green do I want? How much blue do I want? So let's say I just want all, I want to make my background just red. I'd say 255, so it's out of 256, but zero is the initial position. So it's from zero to 255. Do I want any blue? No, or sorry, do I want any green? No, do I want any blue? No, save that, refresh, and that makes it all red. Now let's say I want to make it all blue. How would I do that? Well, I'd maximize my blue and keep the rest same, make them zero, and that maximizes my blue. And then basically changing these numbers gives you 16.8 million different combinations. So to get this orangish brown, I could say 210, 105, and 30. Save this, refresh, this is an orangish brown. Anyways, that's it for this lecture. We covered what external CSS is, how to create a file and link it to your .html, how to write CSS, and understanding the different color values. Again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them and I'll see you in the next lecture.